Thank you very much. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir, you're audible. At the outset, thank you very much, Mayur, for including me in such a big show. And the topic which has been given to me is of a very, very practical approach, and I would try to ease out as much as possible. The topic given is uh, ACE and ARB, SLP2 inhibitors, and a non steroidal MRA, either in the combination or a sequential in a DKT. So, this is really a very practical topic, and uh, both the nephrologists are my chairpersons, and I hope they will throw much light on it after I finish my talk. So, I go ahead. Uh, my flow of the slide will be like this. You know that diabetic kidney disease is almost 40% in the patient in the diabetes development. You know, the basic problem in the diabetes is a hyperglycemia, inflammation, and the hemodynamic changes which cause all the problems, including the diabetic kidney disease. And the prevalence is increasing as a consequence of the growing rates of the obesity, metabolic syndrome, and the westernization of the lifestyle, which have made the complications of diabetes much more worsen, including the diabetic kidney disease. Next. Uh, this is the prevalence of CKD in patient with diabetes, which varies considerably across the countries and the setting. Here, I would like to specify that uh, African Americans, Middle East people, Asian, and the policy patients with the diabetes have a higher prevalence of elevated urinary albumin and the subsequent diabetic kidney complications than the European populations. Next. This is the silent diabetic nephropathy progression. And uh, this is how it starts developing one when it is a hyperfunctional or hyperinfiltration state. From there, it goes to the normal aluminary urea state, then sub subsequently the incipient nephropathy. Uh, initially, when the uh, excretion of the albumin is below 30 mg per day, then between 30 to 300. And it becomes poor and it is more than 300 milligram per day. And subsequently, the GFR goes on decreasing and it leads into the end scale renal disease. And this happens in both the conditions. Yes, yes. Next. You see, DKT associated with increased incidence and the prevalence of other diabetic complications also. We know that diabetes is a multi system disease and it involves all the system of the body, especially the heart, brain, eye peripheral uh, diseases and all that, including the brain. The pathomechanism and the temporal associations of the diabetes mellitus basically is because of hyperglycemia, which uh, it triggers series of uh, manifestations, first the renal hemodynamic changes, then activation of the VAR system, then ischemia and inflammation and the oxidative stress. And because of this, these all events happen, in which leads to different arterial constriction, glomerular hypertension, then glomerular hypertrophy, sclerosis, then photocyte injury, then proteinuria, and all these problems start basically with hyperglycemia, which generates series of events. Now, the recommendations according to this uh, kidney disease improving global outcome guidelines. Next. The management of uh, CKD in a diabetes is a multifactorial risk factor control. And uh, you see, this is how things have to be managed as the lifestyle modification and the first line drug therapy, as shown here, which is right, start from the metformin, then SGLT2 inhibitor, RAS blocker, statin, then the goal directed therapy. If you have to add on some other anti diabetic for the blood, uh, blood sugar control and subsequently the blood pressure control also. The RAS inhibitors are recommended in patients with albuminuria and hypertension. So most of the diabetic patients have hypertension associated, but even if the albuminuria is seen in a patient of diabetes, RAS inhibitors are introduced and are recommended. Similarly, SGLT2 becomes definitely a first choice in a patient. If a diabetes patient has a kidney disease, SGLT2 is a first choice unless contraindicated. Next. Now, the lifestyle measures and the multiple new therapies such as SGLT2 inhibitors and the MRAs, which we are going to talk, can give a good control of the diabetes. As I said in the beginning, the lifestyle and the first line drug, which includes metformin, SGLT2 inhibitor, RAS, inhibit uh, RAS inhibitors, then the targeted therapy, whatever anti 
diabetic you want to add and then subsequently the non steroidal mras which are also included nowadays in the management of diabetic diabetic kidney disease yeah so as inhibitor arbs azl2 inhibitor and the new phenylalanine which we are talking about non steroidal uh, mras now the recommendation is the patient with diabetes albuminuria even with the normal blood pressure treatment with as inhibitor arb can be considered once the albuminuria sets in one has one should have no hesitation in starting as inhibitors and monitor the serum creatine and the potassium level the two important thing which you have to see if there is a normal kalemia you can continue with the ras inhibitor and unless there is increase in the serum creatine which should be more than 30% but if it is a hyperkalemia then you have to think about either the reducing the dose or stopping it or adding some other medicine along with it the overall quality of the evidence was rated as a moderate and uh, as inhibitor have to be either reduced or stopped as per the situation of the potassium level so in all patients of diabetes with hypertension and albuminuria the as inhibitor have to be reduced and there is a high value on the potential benefits of the ras blockade with as inhibitors in the arbs yeah next Now there is a practical approach to introduce uh, SGLT2 inhibitor in patients with type 2 and diabetes CKD. You can uh, you can see with the chart that the patient selection is very very important. The assessment, then intervention, and then the follow up. Naturally, if the GFR is high, more than 20 mL per minute per square body meter, then the high priority features with the albuminuria PCR ratio is more, and there is unless there is a contraindication sglt2 inhibitor should be started and the various sglt2 inhibitors have their dose schedule they should be started whatever you one wants to start and then the follow up assessment is to be done the glycemia part as well as other factor which have to be looked at is why glycemia part and the volume reduction which is a very important feature in sglt2 the side effect and the effect both have to be considered whenever the sglt2 is to be started next now two one clinical renal and the cardiovascular benefits have been shown with the non steroidal minocortical receptor antagonist it and should also be added if the gfr is more than 25 ml there is albuminuria and the serum potassium level is normal there are two these are the very important criteria serum potassium has to be normal and the recommendation places a very high value on the high quality evidence the two very special trial which have come in favor of uh, ns non steroidal mra there is a fetal dkd trial and fegro dkd trial but it places a relative lower value in the risk of hyperkalemia next this is a comparative study between the two landmark trials uh, we need not go, go into the detail the fetal and the fegro because the two these are the two important trial which have been done in the in favor of uh, the new molecule and both trial have shown the benefit in the diabetic control and uh, the cardiovascular outcome both have been found to be kidney friendly in the cardiovascular family of course the fedelo trial has shown much better effect on the kidneys and the fegro trial has shown much improved effects on the cardiovascular outcome next now the phenylalanine resulted in the lower risk of ckd progression in the cardiovascular event and the conclusion which was drawn with this fedelo ckd trial was the phenylalanine which resulted in the lower risk of progression of the ckd and the cardiovascular event than the placebo and the dose which was used was 10 mg and was increasing even up to the 20 mg next definitely reduced the progression of the ckd the another trial which was done was a fegro trial which i said that the conclusion was the primary outcome the cardiovascular out- outcome was significantly lower in the in a wrong group in this agro trial than in the placebo group and it has shown improvement in the cardiovascular as well as the renal outcome next now the aglt2 inhibitor we have already accepted that the aglt2 inhibitors are the first drug of choice in a patient with diabetic kidney disease unless contraindicated 
and they reduce the risk of serious hyperkalemia because it checks out the volume and in people with the type 2 diabetes at a high cardiovascular risk or with the ckd without increasing the risk of hypokalemia because it has shown a benefit over the cardiovascular outcome in so many trials as lp2 uh, has shown uh, including the heart failure various heart failure trial with all kind of uh, preserved ejection fraction reduced ejection fraction and that is why if the diabetic patient has some comorbid condition in the form of cardiovascular disease i think this should be the drug of choice and if it is a dkd even it has shown not only in this trial but also a canvas trial which has shown improvement in the kidney function and the delaying the complications of the kidney uh, worsening of the dfr if the sgp2 inhibitors are used it's now this is a real world study on sgp2 inhibitor and the diabetic kidney disease progression which has also shown the benefits of sgp2 on ckd progression and then stage kidney disease the effect is more pronounced in the moderate to advanced ckd patients ras inhibitor in patient at a high risk for a vascular event you see the primary outcome had occurred in so many patient in the combination therapy also so there is no question about uh, showing the benefit of ras inhibitors in ckd uh, patients next so now the ac inhibitor or arb is sgl2 inhibitors that this is how it shows the improvement ac inhibitor arb is they cause the cardiovascular event reduction blood pressure reduction the albuminuria is reduced similarly the sgl2 causes reduction in the volume overload cardiovascular risk is reduced body weight is reduced the systemic uh, blood pressure systolic blood pressure triglyceride hdl cholesterol level are reduced renal risk is reduced so these two uh, these two molecule have shown its efficacy as far as the cardiovascular and the renal outcome is concerned next now the question is which is the headline of the topic whether in combination or in the sequential therapy the benefits of sglt2 and the fenolan may be additive so definitely it should be initiated prior to the adding a non steroidal mrs for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and kidney disease the addition of fenolan to the sgp2 inhibitor may offer clinically relevant improvement in albuminuria compared with the sgp2 inhibitor alone and the clinical benefits of the fenolan have only been demonstrated when added to ras so if you have to uh, give a suggestion definitely in a diabetic kidney disease first the ras inhibitor ac inhibitors or arb should be started then the sgp2 inhibitor then the fenolan should be started the high renal risk that remains during the ac inhibitor arb treatment might be the consequence of the aldosterone break to phenomena next so this is all the total but the, my message is that though we have not tried this molecule very often in a dkd but we have been using this molecule as uh, ac inhibitor arbs and sglp2 and i think this is the right time to add the newer molecule to prevent the progression of the kidney disease and as far as the sequential therapy and i have made it very clear that it first it should be started a arb or as inhibitor then subsequently a sglt2 inhibitor and then the this new molecule phenolon it should be started thank you